Hello, I'm Jill at Ingvid, and today we have a lesson, uh, especially for people who already know um, a bit about music, but would like to know what the English words are for some of the, uh, the terminology um, in music. So, this is just um, a brief summary of some of the main aspects of music and to do with the way it's written, called notation, and things connected with the theory of music, and all the technical, well, not all the technical things, some of the technical things connected with it, so, so that you can talk about music with people in English. Okay. If if you don't know anything about music, I hope it will also be um, an introduction uh, to some of the ideas and some of the words connected with music. And uh, you you can find other websites to uh, to find out more. So let's have a look. So music vocabulary in English. Um, the names of the notes are A B. C, D, E, F, G. So that would give you an octave. Octave. Well, up to the next A, that is. A to A would be an octave. Okay. So if you're looking at a piano keyboard, for example, th those are the notes on there. Um, the white notes. So we have on the piano keyboard, if you're thinking of music in that way, you've got the white notes and the black notes. Okay, uh, white notes are these letters. The black notes are the flats and sharps. Okay, so if you know about music already, you know what I mean. Uh, if you don't know, um, there are lots of uh, uh, sites on the internet to, to find out more. Uh, if you want to do that after this lesson, okay. So, uh, flat, that's the symbol for flat, as you know, because the musical notation is a universal notation, so it's used all over the world. So, you will know the symbols, I'm sure, but you may not know the English words for them. So, the flat, that's a flat. The sharp, that's a sharp and the natural, if you need to cancel out a flat or a sharp, that's the natural. The symbol is called natural there. Okay. Right. So then coming down to the, the way the music is written, the five lines that it's written on, um, that's called a stave in English. Okay. So I've written a couple of examples here. Uh, with some of the words describing what's what's there. So this stave of five lines has some notes on it. So they're notes. These are the notes. Um, this is called the treble clef, treble clef, which rests on the G. So it shows you that that line is G, treble clef. And this one is called the bass clef, which rests on the F. So you know that line is the F. Okay. Um, so what I've done, I've shown um, a time signature here, four, four, four beats in the bar. So the bar, that's a bar, up to the bar line. Okay. And with the bass clef stave, I've shown 3-4 um, time signature, 3-4, three, three beats in the bar, okay? So we call it 3-4, four, 4-4, four, four. okay? Um, and there's also the key signature there for the key. So that's the key signature, as you know, for G major, or it could be what's called the relative minor would be E minor with the same key signature, E minor. Okay, so that's called a key signature 
just like this is called a time signature, key signature, one sharp, G major or E minor. This one I've given it a key signature for F major with one flat. So the relative minor for that, again, would be D, D minor. So that could be the key signature for something in D minor or in F major, of course. Uh, okay, right. So that's covering the key signatures and the time signatures, the treble clef, the bass clef, the notes. Um, then the spaces between the notes are called intervals in English. So the interval could be a small interval, like a tone or a semitone, or a larger interval. I haven't written them down, but a third, a fifth, an octave. We've got octave there. So G to F sharp, of course, is a semitone, the smallest you can get. Well, yeah, I know in modern music you can get even less than that, but that's getting too too technical for me. So the smallest interval I can recognize is a semitone, G to F sharp, back to G again, semitones. And then G to A, a tone, a whole tone. So you'd call that a whole, whole tone, okay. Um, and then you'd say a third, a major third, a minor third, a fifth, etc. Okay, so just to explain this one, beats in the bar means the number of beats, four, four, one, two, three, four beats in the bar. This is a bar line, okay? This one has three beats in the bar, one, two, three. And here's another bar line. Okay. Um, now then, what else have we got here? So then we move on to note values, the lengths of the notes, short and long. Um, you'll be, I don't know, pleased or not pleased to know that there are different terms used in America from uh, Britain. We have different words. Possibly also it's to do with whether the music is popular or classical as well. But I'll give you both of these so that you've got both. Um, so this one, without a stick on it, um, a white note without a stick, is called a whole note in America. But it's called a semi-breve in British music, okay, in the UK. Uh, this one, a white note with a stick, half, half the length of that one is a half note. So that's a whole note. So this one is half the length. So it's logical that the American system calls it a half note because it's half the length of the one there. So a half note, but in British music, it's called a minim. So I can understand these are less obvious, the British system, um, than the American one. But if you've learnt it, this one, if you've learnt this one, then it's it seems normal. But uh, anyway, so whole note, half note, semi-brief minim. And then this black note with a stick on, um, half the length again of that one. So logically in the American terminology, it's a quarter note. And it especially makes sense here because you have four of them in one bar. So they are each a quarter of the bar. They add up to the whole bar. So in that bar, you would either have one whole note or you would have two half notes or you would have four quarter notes, which is what I've got there. Okay, so a quarter note in American is called a crotchet. 
in the British system. Okay, so not very obvious. Um, so then going, going on, as these notes are half the value each time as the one that went before, half of a quarter note is an eighth note. So it's a black note with a stick and a little tail on it to show that it, what its value is. Very short by this stage. And in the British system, we call that a quaver. Okay. So, and there are lots of other notes, but I've just put the main ones here. So again, the note which is half the value of that one uh, is a black note with a stick and two little tails. And in American language, it's called a sixteenth note because it's half the value of that one. But in the British system, we call it a semi-quaver. That's a quaver. At least there's a bit of logic here. Semi meaning half. Semi-quaver is half the value, half the length of the quaver. So those are the names for the, the, the note values, the lengths of the notes. Okay. And then finally, just to finish with the general terms that are used um, for, the, for the music, uh, what you might call the elements, different elements, um, we use the word tempo, which is an Italian name, meaning the speed of the music, whether it's fast or slow or somewhere in between. Um, there are a lot of Italian terms in music because um, music from Italy was such a strong influence in the early days, and it's still there now. So things like allegro, allegretto, crescendo, diminuendo, are all Italian words which musicians understand, even though they're not in the, their own language. So tempo, um, meaning speed, how fast or slow is the music. Um, volume or dynamics is to do with how loud or, or soft it is. The volume, the dynamics, is it loud or soft or average in between again. Um, another element, of course, very important is the melody or tune. The tune, word tune is a more popular word uh, that everybody uses. They say, oh, that's a lovely tune. What's that? But the more technical musical word for it is melody. Okay. Um, then there's harmony, when all the notes are, are sounding together. Um, but if, if the notes are sounding together, but they're not very harmonious, meaning they don't sound so good. Um, it may be deliberate on the part of the composer. It can be called dissonance. Dissonance, meaning uh, another word for that also is uh, a clash or it's clashing. That music, it's clashing. The instruments are clashing. It, it doesn't sound right together. Or it may just be very modern music, which has been written that way deliberately. So there we are. So you, there is harmony, but it can be dissonance if, if the notes being played all at the same time don't seem to go together it, to your own ears. OK. Uh, timbre, I was talking about Italian words, but this is actually a French word. Timbre is to do with the sort of sound quality of what you're hearing, especially when you recognize a particular instrument. If you recognize an oboe or you recognize a flute or a violin um, or you recognize um, just the speaking voice of a friend on the phone, it's because of the timbre, the sort of sound quality, the characteristic sound of that particular person's voice or musical instrument. You say, aha, I know what that is. That's a saxophone or um, uh, that's, a, that's a cello or whatever. 
you recognize the sound of the instrument. So that's timbre. Um, rhythm is fairly obvious. These time signatures are the rhythm. But of course, also, you can have rhythm that's either fairly regular or it may be rhythm that's um, quite um, irregular. So that's just an overall term for the, the way the notes are played in, in time. Okay. And finally, texture. It's, um, it's a word that's associated with cloth. If something's a thick texture or a, th or a thin texture, this cloth is fairly thick. This, this is a bit thinner. So it's to do with what, what sounds are all being played at the same time. If you have a thin texture, you may only have two instruments playing. Uh, if you have a thick texture, it may be a whole big symphony orchestra who are playing with lots and lots of instruments, all playing lots and lots of different notes. So the texture um, is either thin or thick, um, and it will vary probably during the course of a piece of music just for the sake of variety. Um, okay, so I hope that's been a useful overview and introduced you, if you are a musician, introduced you to uh, the English words for things. Uh, if you're not a musician, um, introduced you to something technical about music, which you can then follow up and find other sites to tell you more. Um, so I hope it's been useful. So if you'd like to go to the website, ingvid.com, there's a quiz there to test you on, on this. And so thank you for watching and see you again soon. Bye for now.